So the mapping is uh, uh, the key idea behind this mapping is called uh, uh, basics. So how many people have heard about this word before? A uh, basics. You have heard about this before? I think you. Okay, so can you explain what you understand as the basis? Right, actually, I don't know like uh, in what context do you learn linear algebra, but like uh, some of the textbooks describe linear algebra in a very general terms, which is actually applicable to exactly this case. So, so, uh, so a basis is described in the context of a linear space, right? And the linear space can be very general. It can be a linear space of functions. That's exactly what we are talking about. So basis of a linear functional space. So what does it mean? In this case, it just means a collection of functions, phi1, phi2, etc. to phi n. Just a, a finite number of functions such that for any function, any f in the functional space, <coughs> I mean functional space is just a fancy <coughs> name for space of functions, just a set of functions, right? Any f in the functional space can be written as what? Linear a linear combination of these fees, right? f is equal to summation of i goes from 1 to n, a i times phi i. Okay, so it's the same definition as in linear algebra, except for uh, if you studied linear algebra in the more kind of a restrictive sense, uh, here the linear space is a space of functions as opposed to be a space of uh, vectors. All right, and uh, this linear functional space has to satisfy just the typical properties of a linear space. For example, if you have f in the linear functional space, 2f is also has to also be in the linear functional space. If you have f and g in the same functional space, f plus g also has to be in the same linear functional space. Here, the kind of functions we construct actually satisfies that property, right? I mean, if a function is piecewise linear, twice that function, of course, is piecewise linear. If I have two different piecewise linear functions, the summation of them also has to be piecewise linear, right? So, so this is automatically satisfied. But like, if you want to use a kind of finite element uh, method that is based on a slightly different uh, uh, functional space, you also want to make sure that functional space is actually a linear space which is just that these two properties. Uh, scaled version of any function is in the same space. The sum of two functions in the space is also in the same space. Okay, once you have that, you can start to think about how do I construct a basis. And one thing I didn't say that is the basis is really the minimum set that has the property. Right, so of course you can add more things. If you already have a have a basis, you can also add a lot more functions onto this set, so that of course it has the same property. But like a basis can only be called a basis if it's a minimum set. And the good thing about the minimum set is it makes sure this there is a one-to-one -one map between f and the collection of n ARs. So the map between a1 to an as a vector to f is a uh, um, is basically is um, uh, bidirectional, which means. If you have an f, you can derive a unique set of linear combination coefficients as soon as you fix these uh, fees. And if you have 
instead of uh, AIs, of course, you automatically get an F by just uh, evaluating that formula. Yes? Uh, does N have to be finite? Does N have to be finite? That's a very good question. In finite element? Of course. Because computers can only crunch a finite uh, set of numbers. Ultimately, we are going to, in order to find a, a U that lies in the functional space, we have to solve for a set of numbers, right? And uh, if this is infinite, uh, computers can solve this yet. Okay. But uh, in mathematics, yes, uh, a a basis can actually be infinite, and uh, you can have uh, easily have infinite dimensional functional spaces. The hovering like yet statement thrown in there is it like relating to the computer that can respond to you? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, so so right, so so this is our way of uh, reducing the solution from a a function to a set of numbers. Now, how do we treat the equations? Now we have this tool. Right, 